वेलकम टू सिग्मा सॉल्वर गाइज बिफोर आई स्टार्ट द वीडियो आई वॉन्ट यू गाइज टू स्मैश द लाइक बटन दिस हेल्प्स द यूट्यूब एल्गोरिदम एंड कीप्स मी मोटिवेटेड एंड इफ यू आर न्यू हियर दैन सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन सो दैट यू नेवर मिस एन अपडेट सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर एडू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन डीप न्यूरल नेटवर्कस विच इज बैक प्रोपोगेशन एंड इन मोस्ट ऑफ द लिटरेचर यू विल फाइंड दैट इट इज calculated using partial derivatives which is the actual uh, derivation but today we are going to use matrix method in order to calculate the back propagation and the weights associated the main motivation behind the implementation in matrix method rather than partial derivatives so let's see how this happens so we are given a neural network with the input 0.4 and the initial uh, like the bias for the input layer is 1 and for the hidden layer also the bias is 1 so we are given this table where input 0.4 and the desired output is 0.5 and 0.3 now some important points which we need to consider is like the order of the matrices in this method is very important because that will allow us to proceed in the calculation further and the steps that i am going to follow in this particular method need to be followed in the same sequence because if you alter the sequence the results will alter and basically it will not give appropriate results okay now let's look into the weights because this is the input layer this is the hidden layer and this is the output layer and the weights i have assumed by myself so if the weights is not given in the question please assume them by yourself and if they are given then just write them down reason being like in neural networks the weights get updated by themselves based on the output and we will see how that happens just below the activation function that we are going to use is sigmoid denoted by 1 by 1 plus e raised to power minus x we will see how we are going to use this next the first thing that we are going to learn is from the inputs so the learning will begin from the left side and proceed towards the right that is the learning direction is from left to right then comes the forward propagation which is also called the feed forward mechanism in this case first we will see how the input and the hidden layer are basically associated and forward propagation occurs here so let's say we have something called as induced field which is v and the formula for v is w transpose x multiplied with x so w transpose denotes the transpose of the weight matrix and x denotes the input matrix including bias so if we see x in our case will be 1 and 0.04 so it will be a 2 cross 1 matrix now here the top row will always be bias that is the bias given here is 1 so it will always be 1 the next thing is like each column will count for an input variable like in our case it is x if there had been more input variables then there would have been more columns now except for the first row all other rows for a column that is for a input variable denote the different values that the input variable can take basically if x in the table could have taken 0.5 and 0.6 then those would have been written below 0.4 as separate rows okay now we come to the weight matrix so in weight matrix it will be a 2 cross 3 matrix in our case now we'll see how and why so each column in this particular weight matrix denotes a neuron and each row attached to a single column counts for the weights incoming to that neuron let us go back to the actual uh, neural network so in this case you see the hidden layer has three neurons so there will be three columns in the weight matrix now for each uh, neuron you see two incoming edges are there this one and this one so in the next neuron also there will be two edges and so on and so forth so each neuron that is each column is going to have two rows associated to them because there are two weights so that's how we create this matrix now the next thing is basically calculating the induced field so we multiply it 
you see that these uh, matrices are basically appropriate to be multiplied with each other so they will result in a 3 cross 1 matrix now if we go to the output for the hidden layer so this was the induced field now we create the output so for creating the output we will use the activation function which in our case is the sigmoid function so we will just simply put these values into this function and calculate so if we put it that way then y1 comes out to be this matrix now let's go on to the next part which is the hidden layer to the output layer which is the second step in the feed forward mechanism now in this case first we will add bias to the output of the first uh, step that is this gets added to a bias now we get this as x2 similarly the output for the previous layer plus bias will become the input for the next layer so we now need to find the next induced field which is w2 transpose x2 similarly here we will have the w2 and if we go above you see there are two neurons so there will be two columns and each column will have four rows because four edges are connected so if you go down you see two columns and four rows so four cross two matrix now induced field will be the transpose of this which becomes two cross four and the output for the first layer which is four cross one with the bias so we get v2 as this two cross one multiplying both of these now we need to create the output for this layer which is the activation function so if we put it that way we get this 0.819 and 0.718 final output is due to the existing weights which are actually right now present now we see that this is different from what we expect as the desired output here is the desired output of 0.5 and 0.3 so this is not what we got because of the weights so what we need to do now is find out the error so the error is basically given by d minus y2 d is the desired output so 0.5 minus 0.819 and 0.3 minus 0.798 we get these right now what we need to do is to calculate the local gradients so we have now completed the first part which is the forward feed mechanism now the back propagation part actually begins and now we take the output which has the error and we slowly move towards the left from where we initially came that is from the inputs and in that way we will be able to find the local gradients now local gradients are basically the derivative of output node with respect to the input nodes as you can say that we are trying to change the weights which are basically an input to the neural network and it modifies the input in order to change the output that it will produce due to the external input so now first we calculate the local gradients between the output and the hidden layer so it is given by the formula delta 2 is equal to phi dash v into e e denotes the error and phi dash denotes the differentiation of the activation function so for the sigmoid function it is equal to phi of v into 1 minus phi of v it's a standard formula for sigmoid function but like if the activation function is different then it will change so since this is equal to y2 we just simply substitute the value here so in this case we will get these two matrices right just simply put the value of y2 from here this and 1 minus y2 into e we get this now we need to multiply them in a scalar fashion this means 0.819 into 0.181 into minus 0.319 and this gives us 0.17 minus 0.17 similarly the lower value and now we come to the next part which is local gradient between the hidden layer and the input so for that the formula is a bit changed which is pi dash v into summation of weights into delta i which is the local gradients for the last layer that we did 
so in this case again the derivative will remain the same because activation function is sigma and and we will multiply w i into delta i so if we do that w i has the matrix of 4 cross 2 and delta i as we just calculated is 2 cross 1 and this 4 cross 1 is from the weight matrix of the second layer why because we are already catering to the first that is the previous layer towards this hidden layer with phi dash v and the later part is handled by this term okay if we now calculate this after the multiplication or matrix multiplication we get this matrix which is 4 cross 1 and y1 is already 4 cross 1 so we just simply multiply all these three scalarly again we get this now we will have to remove the bias because local gradients will have to remove the bias associated for the hidden layers now we come to the updation of weights for which we did all this back propagation so between the output layer and the hidden layer first we need to calculate so which is w2 or delta w2 is equal to y1 times delta transpose so in this case y1 is basically 4 cross 1 and delta 2 if we took, take the transpose it is 1 cross 2 so we multiply and get a 4 cross 2 matrix simply now we can add the delta that is the change in weight to the old weight to get the new or updated weights so if we do that we will get the new updated weights here right now we will do the same thing for the layer between the hidden layer and the input layer so the weights between these two layers can be modified using this particular formula which is y0 into delta 1 t so you see we take the output from the previous layer in this case it is basically the input given to the neural network in the previous case it was y1 and the delta associated with this particular hidden layer so just simply taking the values from above this is the input and this is the um, local gradient if we go above you will find that this was the local gradient so we just simply put that right in transpose simply put it and calculate it right perfect now we actually update the weight which is w1 old plus the delta that we just calculated and if we multiply those two we get the new weights so this is how you perform back propagation using matrices i have done this for a single hidden layer but you can do this for a neural network where there are multiple hidden layers along with many more neurons and inputs so that's been it if you still have any doubts then feel free to reach out in the comment section below if you like this video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos Till then, happy solving. Hey there, before you go, I've got some fantastic content lined up for you. Over here, we've got some videos and playlists you might enjoy. But first, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.